Hello out there again. It's time for a little bit more gas mask mayhem. I've had a request for a look at the Soviet PBF style mask. PBF stands for Protivo Gaz Vez Korovochnia Filtrushni. Pardon my Russian, it's not that good. That actually refers to the system as a whole. The mask itself is designated SHMB. It's like Shlem Maska Bez Karavochny. That's basically helmet mask without box, as it doesn't have the standard long hose that goes down to a filter canister that's carried in a shoulder bag. That was typical for Soviet infantrymen in that era. This was designed for the Soviet airborne forces, people that are generally operating behind enemy lines or with limited support, and don't have trucks or personnel carriers to carry their junk around with them. And that other rig could be quite a bit of stuff to carry around. So the idea was that they would develop a mask that would give them some protection and still be easy to carry for the Vozdushno uh, Dostantnya Voiska, that's literally air landing forces in Russian. That can include both paratroopers and units that are just air mobile by airplane. So in the 1970s, this mask was developed for use by those forces, and it continued in production pretty much right up to the collapse of the Soviet Union. It was manufactured in a couple of different colors and a number of different sizes, and we'll take a look at those as we go on here. So first things first, let's try to get it on here. With these helmet style masks, having a good size and the appropriate size is important for you. And I have a big one, and you probably can't see on the side here where it says M76. That is quite likely 1976 was the year of manufacture. So these are pretty old. They're all basically old and expired now. As are the filters and there's no modern safe filter or anything like that with these. So definitely do not get one of these and consider that you're gonna be protecting yourself from any chemical agents or anything like that. All of these masks are old and expired. Most important thing when you're getting it on is to uh, not fold it over on itself and getting a good seal. So let's give it a shot here. And I think we got a good seal there. You can see the helmet style mask that covers your pretty much your almost your entire head. And you got the large cheek filters on each side. That led to this mask being given the hamster or gorilla nickname among the troops that had to use it. In each side, there's a large pork chop shaped cheek filter. It's held in place on the outside with one of these inlet valve discs. Inside the mask, there's a standard oral nasal cup inside that covers your nose and mouth. so that you're less likely to fog things up. In the voice meter assembly, there's no provision for drinking or anything like that with these masks. A full set of this besides the mask, filters, and covers <coughs> usually came with some kind of anti-dim lenses or a stick of paste so that it wouldn't fog up quite as easily and also a decontamination kit 
and a carry bag to put everything in. These days the fuller sets are getting hard to find. If you're out shopping around on the auction or military surplus sites, you'll probably only find sets that just have the mask, the filters, and the outlet valve covers these days. Anything else is getting a little tough to find. Hey, right, time for some bonus drop-in footage. And a close-up in selfie mode, too. I wasn't too happy with the my description of the way the sizes came out. So I thought I'd reshoot that little bit and drop it in here instead. And it's an excuse to put the mask on again, which is always a good thing. I think the uh, PBF kit series actually improves my appearance immensely, so that's never a bad thing. But anyway, the SHMB mask slash PBF kit was available in five sizes overall from zero to four in the Soviet system, with zero being the smallest and size four the largest. Size zero was effectively a children's or very tiny adult size. Very few people would be able to wear that. Even the number one size was pretty small overall. Most people would be a two or three. And if you're a super mutant like me, you need the size 4, which this mask is. So, they certainly had the possibilities covered there pretty well by issuing 5 different sizes. Now back to your regularly scheduled footage. Thanks. Bye. These were also produced in a couple of different colors and locations. You may see these masks besides in that light gray-green color that I'm wearing. They come in all black also. Although these days the all black ones seem to be harder to find. There's no real difference or significance to the mask color. It's not like officers had black ones or any nonsense like that. All it was was the time and place it was produced and what was available at the time. These masks do have some good features to them. And it's easy to carry, easy to put on. And with a dual intake valve, it's pretty easy to breathe through it. With that helmet style, as you can see, that it covers your entire head. You get a good deal of protection from splash from liquids and things like that, even if you're not wearing a separate hood. So that's definitely a plus also. Some of the downsides I found to this mask though is that the longer you wear it, the squeeze tends to get worse and it tends to get more uncomfortable on your head the longer you have it on. And like a conventional mask that's just being crossed into your face, this one is kind of squeezing you from all directions at the same time. Also, I found it can lead to jaw fatigue, even if you have a properly sized mask. It actually pushes pretty hard down here under the filters. And eventually you can have start having your jaw aching on you too. Another potential downside to this series masks and this style, you can see my ear is completely enclosed underneath the rubber. They did try to thin the material there a little bit so that you could hear some, but definitely you'll notice your hearing is not very good with one of these on either. If you cruise the internet for video, you may have seen some other masks like the GP5 series. Some of the later versions actually have a cutout in the rubber there so that the person can hear better. No such luck on these. You might also have noticed by now that the eyepieces are very small on this too. And while it's flat, which is a good thing, 
when you're trying to use a pair of binoculars or look for a weapon sight. That's not too difficult with one of these on. But overall, their small size does not give you a very wide field of vision either. And that can be a drawback with, compared to some other masks where you can easily see well off to the side with the big eyepieces. These ones are so small you're pretty much limited to just looking straight ahead and you have to turn your head to look at something else. As I said, all of these masks are long, very old and long since expired now and you can't get in date filters or anything else like that for them. And like a lot of older Soviet masks, it's not entirely clear exactly what's inside those filters either. So, definitely do not rely on this for any form of NBC protection or anything like that. Because it's old, it's expired, the filters are old and expired. And basically, you're just probably kidding yourself and making the situation worse, assuming you've got some kind of protection with one of these masks on. That said, they are kind of fun. And they're definitely intimidating and scary. If you are making a list of uh, frightening looking gas masks, I'm pretty sure this one would find a place on it. You wouldn't want to meet up with a bunch of people in a dark alley wearing these, that's for sure. So, makes a nice interesting collectible if you're into gas masks or Soviet military. Just don't depend on it for anything real. And thanks for watching this video. And I hope to see some nice comments about people that like the PBF. And hopefully we'll be back at you with something old or new in the near future. Thanks again. Bye.